Hey everyone, it's Ankur Kumar. I'm a founder of Faithcraft. Uh, it's a blogging platform to help everybody understand software architecture, share best practices and uh, emerging trends. Um, today's session, uh, we are going to talk about basics and fundamentals of software architecture. What is software architecture? What is the industry definition of it? How can you build a software architecture? So let's get started. So what is a software architecture? Um, there are definitely different uh, perspective from uh, different uh, folks, right? So some consider it as like it's significant uh, decisions which you're making for a software. Some consider it is to be an iterative process, which is going to meet the business objective. Um, some consider it as a style, which is uh, uh, specifically related to engineering domain. Uh, some consider it as a skeleton where you are defining that how you're going to build a software in your organization. And some consider it as a, a side of uh, principles and guidelines which you can build uh, for uh, building large software system. And uh, let me tell you this, uh, there is no right or wrong answer. Um, in terms of uh, you know, having a software architecture, it is most of these definitions can correlate with each other. So in a way, uh, if you want to define, and I'm uh, just uh, going to define in very simple terms, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a blueprint of the system, which you either already built or you're planning to build. And um, when you are uh, configuring software architecture or we are creating uh, diagrams for uh, representing different views of software architecture, uh, essentially what we are, trying to showcase is what are the different components and uh, what is the relationship between those components. And uh, then you have certain principles, right? Based on your system under consideration, you want to define certain principles and you want everybody to adhere to your principles so that uh, it's not chaotic, right? The developers need certain guidelines. Um, uh, your organization needs certain um, guidelines. And at organization level, you might have an enterprise architecture practice which is establishing those guidelines. But at an application architecture level, you as an application architect um, can establish those constraints, those guidelines, so that the developers, uh, rest of the team is going to follow those guidelines. This is uh, most about that building the discipline and that's what the software architecture is. So the key question um, people ask um, when I have a conversation about software architecture, is do we have a standard definition? Um, has anybody defined it? And uh, the short answer is yes. Um, definitely there is a industry standardization as well. And uh, three organizations I just wanna call out like IEEE, ISO, IEC, all these are standards uh, across uh, different uh, geographies and um, they're all, uh, you know, have different definition of software architecture. And, uh, but the intent what, I talked about, you know, intent is same that how you can uh, lay out the uh, foundational building block for uh, the product or system under consideration. So let's look at the um, ISO and I um, collaboration of all these uh, uh, companies to come together and create, uh, they created a specification called uh, 42010. Uh, and uh, the specification is for defining systems and software engineering. And that in that specification, uh, which is now an international standard, they talk about definition of software architecture. And it's a, it's a good documentation to read. And if you don't want to read, you can also read a corresponding book, which I will share at the end of uh, the session. But this uh, specification talks about you know, what is a software architecture in general? Um, their definition is it's, it's nothing but a fundamental organization of system uh, embodied in its component and relationship to each other in an environment and uh, principles uh, following certain design and evolution guidelines. So I've highlighted certain components and don't um, get overwhelmed by the definition, but the key part to understand, and I'm going to unpack those uh, elements like what is the fundamental organization components and relationships and environment, right? So that you have a very clear understanding of what a software architecture is. So let's break this definition and uh, focus on fundamental organization. When you say fundamental organization, what does it mean, right? So say that you are trying to define uh, a retail system um, for, uh, for a online um, you know, retail company. So what you can do is that 
First, you need to, uh, if you have read about domain-driven design, it's nothing but you first identify those domain objects. And basically you try to organize those domains and then accordingly, um, similar to that, if you have certain technical components in your system, you try to organize them together and try to put, a, put up a picture that how these components will talk to each other, right? So this is a very simplistic view of how you can define organization of internal systems. Suppose I'm designing a, a retail system, I might have an experience layer and a proxy layer and a microservices layer and gateway and, and uh, you know I might have some monolith uh, services or maybe legacy services. So we, we can use um, the fundamental organization is nothing but how you are layering out, whether are you following the layered architecture, are you following microservices or are you following uh, event-driven architecture? So how do you want to uh, represent that how the system is organized? Is That's what about the fundamental organization. Once you establish um, the other component, which is related to that is uh, what is the relation be relationship between those components? And, uh, and that's another sample, right? Which I've taken from Microsoft side that is, if you look at this diagram, you can see that uh, it's nothing but a more like a collaboration or sequence diagram, which is, but the key part to notice here is it's demonstrating how the components are talking to each other, right? And which is very important, the, how the sales website is receiving the order, how the payment is getting processed, how the kitchen is getting the order. So the entire flow of event, it's nothing but a, a kind of a, orchestration of uh, the relationship, right? That that's the relationship which you're gonna depict it through the software architecture. So we covered like foundational um, elements, we covered the um, relationship aspect. And the third aspect is your environment, right? So in which environment you are uh, creating this architecture, which is the most important part because no architecture is good or bad. It's, it's always, um, if you're looking at it in a silo, don't look, look at that way. You have to always look at within the context of an environment. So when I say environment, environment can be a business environment, um, you know, which is your business, what business problem you're trying to solve. It could be a social environment that how the organization is socially structured. And that's very important part that, you know, what is the practice of, uh, you know, establishing standards and what is the social aspect um, and that's an, another important aspect. And this third aspect is the technical aspect that, you know, do you want a system to be cloud ready and meeting all the non-functional uh, requirements, uh, cloud native and all that, right? So you need to look and build the software architecture within that context of environment. So that's the most important part, the environment is. So pretty much we have covered, uh, you know, how are the different elements like in the earlier definition, like organization, relationship, and environment is important in uh, software architecture. The only last piece is the principles. And principles like, you know, what principles you learned in college or school days, it's similar to that, that you are nothing but you are defining certain boundaries in which you will operate. And those boundaries could be anything, right? And uh, it's just a guidance that uh, which provides to the team that you operate within these guidance. And that's the principle. It's a belief and an approach and you operate within the limits. You don't want to say and don't want to create a chaotic environment, right? You want to define those boundaries. And that's why the architecture principles are very important. So one architecture principle, I'm just sharing an example, is uh, for example, you establish a principle that I want to create a software architecture, which is technologically independent. When I say you don't want to um, get into a vendor lock-in and we don't want to make sure uh, that you are not you know, tied to one particular vendor. So Suppose you establish that as an architecture principle. Now, if you look at any software architecture when you're going to design, you are going to look at it from that lens. You are not going to choose uh, a solution which is very vendor centric. You want to, to, uh, to choose a solution uh, which is very, um, you know, industry standards. You can easily switch vendor uh, following, you know, so that you have now established a principle and you are ensuring that everybody is following that principle and you will make the selection based on that principle. And that's the importance of architecture principle. There can be many, but you have to shortlist and say, oh, these are the 10 principles I want to follow when I'm defining the software architecture. And you need to ensure that every stakeholder with whom you are interacting and formulating that software architecture um, is agreed, uh, has agreed to that uh, you know, set of principles. So having said that, we have pretty much covered you know, the definition of software architecture. I know it's a, it's a vast area. I know there are different elements to it but that defines 
pretty much the essence of uh, uh, software architecture. And we can have a quick look at um, you know some of the industry examples of how Netflix has defined a, a, a software architecture. And this is just a view of you know how they have represented one of the um, software architecture diagrams which they have created. Now, when it comes to creating those diagrams, you know, there are again, two different uh, school of thought. One is that you can use certain uh, standard like C4 model or UML and all, or you can have your own notations. Like in this case, like Netflix is using um, their own notation that, you know, both have different uh, pros and cons because if you're using your own notation, it's more easy to understand. Maybe your organization is trained for that. But make sure that you all the color coding, all the nomenclature you have easily, and it's it's documented so that everybody can understand what does this blue color means. Blue means existing or new and all that. So you know, documenting and communicating the software architecture is another art which you will definitely need to um, improve and uh, continue working towards. Um, Amazon, like for this matter, they have created a three D view of the architecture. So you can use that as well. It's if it helps to visualize the software architecture, but that's just an example. You can follow UML, you can follow 3D, you can follow any um, modeling tool, but the key essence is you are trying to describe uh, what we talked about earlier, like what is the organization of elements of uh, uh, components within the system and how they are talking to each other. These are um, the key essence of what you're trying to communicate in these software architecture diagrams. Um, one important tip is don't try to define all views in one single diagram. It's gonna be a, mess because you can use and don't try to do everything in you know in one shot you can incrementally develop it uh, in an agile way rather than trying to develop everything in one go so um, you can simply start with uh, as simple as like a system context diagram and i'm just sharing an example of a hotel reservation system it's it's the you can say a 50000 feet view or level 0 of your software architecture from there you can start unpacking each component and then creating their relationship their you know, kind of interactions and all those things. So you can start with simple view like this, and then you can, you know, detail it out further. That's the key essence of uh, what I'm trying to communicate here. So now that we understand, um, you know, you can feel free to go and read about this uh, specification. Uh, the other thing which I would say, if you want uh, to read a book, I'll recommend uh, this book by Nick Rosinski and Ian Woods, where it, creates an, um, you know, different elements. It talks about different elements of software architecture in very detail. I really loved book, uh, this book. So I'll highly recommend to read this book. Um, if you have time, go ahead and read this book, which is gonna cover different aspect of software architecture that uh, uh, pretty much in the viewpoints and perspective, right? That what are the viewpoints through which you want to describe your software architecture and what are the, um, perspective through which you want to make sure that your architecture is well documented. So you can go and read about different aspects of architecture, but I'll leave you with this note that, you know, there is no, uh, you know, single uh, magic bullet, which you can use to defining it. You can learn it uh, iteratively and it's very contextual. And based on that context, you can always define and document uh, software architecture. So thank you, and uh, you can always reach out to me through uh, reach out to me through Wavecraft, and um, happy to engage in any conversation through Twitter as well. And uh, um, thank you, thank you for listening to me.